Hello, and welcome back to Get Your Shit Together with me, your host, Belen Salomon. This is episode four, and it's been a rough week. I got very sick this week. Um, If you follow me along on Instagram, uh, you saw that I got basically poisoned by a plant-based wellness shot um, that kicked my ass, and I was literally sick uh, for five days. So feels good to be sitting here and working and recording my fourth episode of Get Your Shit Together. So if this is your first time listening to the pod, thank you. If you are returning for the fourth week, thank you so much. And thank you um, for following along and the reviews and just kind of supporting this. So Last night, we had dinner with some friends here, and we were talking about traveling. And I thought, what a great episode it would be to kind of give my do's and don'ts of traveling. Um, And we just had a really interesting conversation about just kind of like the thought process that goes into like traveling, and then when you return from a trip, and like just like habits that you know, people have and how they look at things. So I'm going to dive into that, into this episode as well. Um, But I do want to talk about kind of the do's and the don'ts and what I have learned of traveling, um, especially this past year, um, kind of how I have adjusted to being very efficient when I travel, because I absolutely was not like this um, pre-COVID. So... Let me start off with saying I didn't own a carry-on literally until last year when I started commuting essentially from Austin to LA. Um, I didn't believe in carry-ons. I thought more is more. I always had a huge luggage and I overpacked. I was like the queen of like, oh, well, if this happens, I have the perfect dress, the perfect shoe, whatever it was. And it definitely uh, didn't help that Alejandro like is It's not that he's the same, but he doesn't want to carry anything. So he was never like, we're doing carry on. He's like, I don't care. Check in. It doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if there's an extra 20 minutes. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to carry anything. I don't want to be restricted. So I kind of had that mentality too. Like, oh, I don't want to be restricted of anything. I don't want them to take my products, whatever the case was. So I was notorious of always packing so much shit and our luggage was always overweight and 10 out of 10 times, I'm going to go ahead and say, I didn't wear 90% of what I brought, but it was there. And at the time I thought that was the wisest thing to do. So last year, um, when we moved out here, um, it was kind of, you know, I had told Alejandro, okay, well, if we're going to live in Austin, like I'm going to be traveling basically monthly to LA because my work is there, my family, my friends, and like, you know, I have to be able to travel there as often as I need to. Um, if we're doing this move and prior to the pandemic, Alejandro was the one that traveled a ton. So I was mainly home all the time with the exception of maybe going out of town for like one of our birthdays. Um, or if we had a wedding that was a destination wedding, but like really for like five years, I really wasn't traveling like maybe once or twice a year max. So I, would always bring a regular luggage because I didn't, I was just like, well, what do I need to carry on for? So when we moved out here last year and I started going back monthly, I purchased a carry on and, um, I was like, well, I'm sorry, let me back up. The first time I went out there was April, 2021. And I brought a regular suitcase and I was like, this is not going to work out. I was at LAX. I didn't have a car. It was very overwhelming. I had to get my luggage. It was big. It was heavy. And I was like getting on the shuttle to go get the rental car. And I was like, this is so not efficient. This is such a fucking waste of time. And I obviously wore basically the same thing for the three days I was there. I wore same pair of jeans and like switched out my tops. So when I went back in May, I was like, I had to bring a carry on. So I quickly learned that I needed to be very smart with what I was packing and how I was packing it so that I can basically have longevity with what I was bringing. And I became very kind of strategic also with just how I would pack. So for instance, if I was bringing a heavier coat or heavier boots, I would wear them 
on the flight versus packing them because it takes up so much space and it weighs the luggage for no reason when I can be wearing the item. Obviously, it's much easier to bring a carry-on when you're going somewhere tropical or it's warmer weather. It's a little bit trickier when it's winter, but there are tricks such as wearing your heaviest coat, your thickest sweater, whatever is going to be kind of bulky, you can wear it. Um, so I started mapping out all of my outfits, which is like something I really recommend doing. Um, if you want to write it down, you want to put it in your notes and your phone, you can kind of be like, okay, Monday, I'm going to wear this Tuesday. I'm going to wear, you know, jeans and a sweater. Wednesday, I'm going to wear the same jeans, this top, and you kind of map out what you're going to wear. That way you don't overpack and you know exactly what you're going to be wearing. And this is very helpful because you have everything like mapped out and you don't feel that that is the best way to avoid overpacking, which is something I didn't do because I was like, oh, well, what if my mood changes? Well, now, you know, it can't change because I have a certain amount of pieces that I have to make work. And um, this has been super helpful because I, I truly don't overpack. Now, now I'm so good at packing that I, I'm like, wow, I didn't even need this shirt. And I had the room for it. It's, it's a whole new me, everyone. Um, so that is a really, really, really great tip I can give. Also, um, packing cubes are really awesome if you want to kind of separate everything. Um, you know, separating all of your electronics is super helpful too. Like I have like a little bag and like I put in there like my phone charger, my computer charger, um, my Mophie pack, what, whatever it is. So it's kind of like separated. Everything has a home. So it's much easier to like go through everything and know where everything is. Um, especially like three days, four days, it, it, you really don't need that much because if you're bringing active wear, okay, so I'll bring like two sets and then typically wherever I'm staying, there's a washer and a dryer. So I can like wash my clothes, wash my, you know, my garments that need to be washed. And like, I have fresh clothes. Um, and again, this is easier, of course, when you're doing a quicker trip and, um, investing in a, in a decent carry on is also like a great, thing to do. I love my away luggage. Um, I have the bigger carry on and it's very roomy. Um, uh, Bays also makes a really great luggage. So does to me and just, you kind of like, you know, know this is going to be what you're investing in and it's going to have longevity or whatever you get a carry on for target. It doesn't matter as long as it's a good carry on and like it has a little bit of expanding, you can make it work. Um, and so for me, with my toiletries, I've also gotten very good because now I basically have a carry-on ready to go at all times, but my toiletries is also ready to go at all times. So I basically over time have like bought and double of everything that I use in mini size. So literally I'm going to LA on Thursday and I'm going to film this on YouTube, but my carry, my excuse me, my toiletry bag is ready to go already. So I have my mini face wash, my mini night cream, my mini eye cream, all that is on one side. Then on the other side, I have my makeup and it's like very basic, clean makeup and it's all mini size. So I literally do not have to think about packing my toiletries. It's done. So that goes in one section of my bag along with the chargers, which I also have extra of now too, so that I'm just kind of simplifying and making my life easier when I pack. And I just put in what I need for those three or four days that I'm in LA. If I'm staying with my best friend or I'm staying at my sister's house, I have already left there an extra pair of pajamas, an extra pair of workout clothes and running shoes so that I don't even have to pack those items. Um, again, obviously this is an exception because I do go back to LA every single month. But if you're in a similar position that you're traveling to the same place every month, I suggest doing that. Like literally an extra pair of PJs that you have, pack two, leave one there. And same thing with the active wear. Um, that way it's like one less thing I need to think about. Um, this trip, I, I'm staying in a hotel, so I have to bring all those extra items, but nine out of 10 times I stay with either a friend or um, my family. So being efficient um, with those items is super, super helpful. Um, and I don't, like I don't, overpack. Like I used to pack like three or four pairs of pajamas, like for four nights. Like you just make, you make it work, you wash it, whatever you need to do. Um, 
And I find having less is also just like so much easier because I won't almost feel tempted that I have to be wearing a different pair of jeans every single day. Like it's just, it's so wasteful. So for me, I'm like, okay, what do I have going on while I'm in LA? So for instance, I'm going there for a photo shoot this week. I will travel in an, in a sweatsuit. So that will be my outfit basically all of Thursday until I have dinner. So I'll check into the hotel. I'll freshen up and then I'll have my evening outfit. And then for the photo shoot, I'll probably wear the same jeans that I wore the night before and one of my tops, obviously. And then that night I'll have dinner. So maybe I'll bring a different pair of pants. Maybe I'll bring a pair of white denim, wear a top and one pair of maybe heels or like a boot, a booty so that I'm not overpacking a ton of stuff. And then on my flight back, I'm going to wear the exact same outfit that I wore there. So if you kind of have that mindset of whatever you're going to wear there, you're going to wear on the way back. That saves space for maybe potentially another look that you want versus having to pack two sweatsuits. Um, I, again, I used to do this. I was like the queen of overpacking and always having options. Now I'm like, same jacket, same shoes. I don't give a fuck. Easy peasy. It's done. So much more efficient. I know exactly what I'm going to be wearing. And by the way, if you need something, you can always just go buy it or borrow it. Like if it's really cold and I don't want to bring a gigantic coat because it, maybe it's hot here, I'll just tell my girlfriend, hey, can I borrow a jacket when I get there? Of course, no problem. So if you're staying with a friend or you're staying with a family member and it is cold and you don't want to lug something, ask to borrow something. It's just a couple days. However, you can make everything more easier, I highly suggest. Um... Another thing that I recently started doing last year was checking in on my phone. I was one of those old people who would check in at the airport. So wasteful, such like, I don't even know what I was thinking. I literally would like print out my boarding pass. And then I discovered that you could have an app of the airline that you're traveling. So now everything is so seamless for me. I check in online, I have my carry on, bada bing, bada boom. So easy. Um, I have Clear, which if you don't know what Clear is, Clear is an option that you can get at the airport to kind of bypass the line. Um, it's not as like efficient as TSA in the sense that TSA is in all airports. Clear is kind of getting there. Um, TSA, which is I am getting this year, is better because that way you don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to like unload your laptop. Clear, you do have to do that. Although I will say, all airports are different these days. Like sometimes they don't make me take off my shoes. Sometimes they do, but I currently have clear and I love it. Um, so between clear and having the mobile app of the airline that I'm traveling, it's so easy when I go to the airport. Also the Austin airport's amazing. LAX is obviously a clusterfuck, but I got to fly in there. Um, so I check in the day before it's all ready to go. You have the app on your phone, you show it, you walk in. I, I literally now get to the airport like 30 minutes, not even, like 20 minutes before we board. Just enough time so I can get my water, maybe get a magazine, and then I get on the plane. So it's just become very seamless and easy. So if you don't have the app, definitely download it. And um, I want to say like all airlines now have an app. Um, and look into TSA or Global Entry or Clear and it's worth every dollar because it's saving you time, especially if you're somebody who travels monthly, like myself. Um, it's so crazy because Alejandro has traveled like monthly for years and he didn't have any of this. Um, now he does. So now he has clear, he's getting global entry, I'm pushing more of a carry-on for him when he travels to, um, when he has short trips. But those are huge game changers for somebody who does travel often. Um, it's so worth making the appointment and going. It's And you have it, I think, I believe TSA is good for five years, which is amazing. Same with global entry. Clear, is, I do know, is yearly. Um, so now, as I mentioned, I pull up literally 20 minutes before takeoff, and it's so easy. And it's just like, it's made traveling a lot easier on me because I think, you know, not doing these small things, it was just delaying everything. And then it really does make a difference bringing a carry-on. Like now I don't have to wait an extra 15 minutes. 
And obviously also like, what if the luggage doesn't make the flight? It gets lost. And our friends that we're ha- we were having dinner with last night, um, she, my girlfriend recently went to LA and she brought, she didn't bring a carry on and her luggage didn't make it. And so her boyfriend asked me last night, he was like, can I know like how you pack? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a carry on gal now. You know, I bring my carry on. And so I was explaining everything that I'm saying in this podcast and how, you know, I wear my biggest boots, this and that. And he's like, that's very military style. Um, and which I was, I obviously never thought of that. Why would I? But it's just, it's funny because I look at it like, well, it's the heaviest items. I'm going to wear them that way. I'm more like efficient with like my storage space. So we were talking about how you just kind of like need to think ahead, plan ahead and make the most out of like the room that you have and the space that you have. Um, Another thing that I suggest doing if you're traveling abroad is print out um, all of your documents so you have, you know, backup. Or of course, you can also like put it in, in an album on your iPhone. But that's also really like important to have accessible because if you're traveling to another country, you always have to fill out like the paperwork and like if your passport and you're just like, you don't have everything kind of like organized, it's a much easier way to get to things if you have it in like a certain bag or on your phone and you have like your passport number, your driver's license number, whatever like paperwork that you're going to need. I've always been that way. My dad was always like that. So like I, it was always like your boarding pass, your, your map quest, like all those type of items you would have at handy so that when you got to your destination, everything was kind of there. So I still do that. Obviously not with LA, but like when we travel abroad, I'm like very like, this is all the paperwork. It's always handy. So it's ready to go. Um, uh, another tip is weigh your bag at home if you can. Airlines are super strict with weight. And if you kind of catch yourself prior, you won't have to be like trying to take shit out or having to like give them, you know, whether it's a product or something like that. So if you can weigh your bag at home, weigh your bag at home and like it's one less thing you have to worry about too. Um, And the don'ts I would say are, I already talked about this, but sometimes I think it's, it's good to hear it separate don't overpack, don't check in at the airport, um, don't leave everything for the last minute either if you can, like pack, like don't leave it like your flight's at 10 a.m. and like you're packing at like 7 a.m. Like just do it the night before so that that it's done and you're feeling a little bit more relaxed, especially if you're somebody who's anxious when they fly, which I used to be. Um, I used to be terrible actually, which is really bizarre because I like, kind of always like was the first one to be like, yeah, let's go on a trip. Like, let's do it. And then I would spiral on the flight. And then one day I just kind of was like, this is like so cool that I get to be on an airplane and like what a privilege. So I kind of calmed myself with that. And also, you know, the likelihood um, of something happening is much slimmer than driving when you're on an airplane. And now that I've covered the do's and the don'ts of traveling, specifically with a carry-on. Um, I wanted to wrap up the episode with when you return from a trip, um, if you unpack your luggage. Obviously, it goes without saying that I immediately unpack my luggage. Um, I don't understand how anyone wouldn't. I, and again, if you're getting home at like 2 a.m., of course, but like for me, like I just like kind of look at it like, why wouldn't I get it done right now because I'm gonna have this lingering thought in the background of, fuck, I have to unpack my shit. So for me, especially with the carry-on, there's such limited stuff in there. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna put this in the laundry, put my shoes away, and everything is ready to go, like it's done. Like my toiletries are ready, so I can just put that back in the drawer that it goes in. Same with like my um, phone charger, computer charger, all that stuff. I I leave that in in my carry-on actually. And I even have um, a little bag that I bring um, for laundry. So that's another tip that I didn't mention, but I separate all of my dirty laundry and like I put that in a little bag so that even when I unpack, that's already ready to go too for my laundry. I don't have to like shovel through everything. And the reason why I'm bringing this up too is last night when we were having dinner with our friends, my girlfriend was like, I still haven't unpacked from LA. She's been back like over a week. And I was like, what 
do you mean you haven't unpacked? And I, I was, I genuinely wanted to know. I said, what, like, what's your thought process behind this? She goes, oh, well, I just have, I have more, like I have extra, like I have more underwear. I have, you know, more, um, uh, beauty products. I have more makeup. I have more outfits. And I go, well, okay. Like, so, so do, like, so do I. I still unpack everything. And her boyfriend was like, it's crazy. She doesn't unpack it, blah, blah, blah. And I genuinely was like, but it takes literally less than five minutes. Even if you have a bigger suitcase, it just has, everything just has to be put away or washed. So what is the reasoning? Like I was trying to truly understand it. And Alejandra and I were like, well, wouldn't you rather just do it right there and then? Because now it's been over a week and you're still thinking about this every day about how you have to unpack. It's created a mess. It's created clutter. And maybe it's caused also some friction between you and your partner because it's still there. It's something that you haven't attended to. And she was like, I didn't never kind of looked at it like this. And I'm like, well, now, like maybe next time when you travel, you'll kind of look at it like, okay, I'm going to get home. I got home at four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm just going to unpack real quick. It's going to take me five to six minutes and then it's going to be done. I don't have to think about it. It's not going to be a lingering thought. It's not going to be taken away from another, um, you know, job task that I have to do. So if you are someone who doesn't unpack and just lets it sit there, maybe next time you travel, try that. You get home, even if you're tired, just be like, you know what? These extra five minutes that I would probably realistically, let's all admit it, be on our phones. I'm just going to unpack my suitcase. Start the laundry. I promise you, you're going to be so much more stoked that it's done than having five days go by and it's still in the corner of your room or your closet or your bathroom or wherever you put your suitcase. You're going to feel so much better and like, like efficient knowing I'm back home. I'm ready to like get back into my groove, my routine and my suitcase is put away and I don't have to worry about that. That is something that um, I think can be really life-changing if you're someone who doesn't do that. Um, and again, like that's also, I mean, it goes hand in hand with anything else. Like if you are somebody who doesn't put their laundry away or leaves clothes on their floor, like just try slowly making little tweaks and you're going to see like such a difference. Because as I mentioned in previous episodes, you know, daily habits become weekly habits and monthly habits and like, you know, a lifetime of habits. And if you are somebody who travels a lot, this will help also not feel such a, like such a burden because traveling can be a burden. And even though it's fun and it's amazing, it's still you you are being disrupted in your routine. So the more you, you can do to make it smooth and easy, I suggest doing it. Um, and those are kind of all my, all my tips with traveling. So if you have a trip coming up, um, try taking a carry on, try writing out your outfits so that you don't overpack, um, have all your toiletries ready to go. And if you can find your favorite products in travel size, pick them up, go to target. You can go to CVS. You can get everything mini size, um, pack your uh, electronics separately uh, check in online. If you can do TSA or clear, definitely look into that and um, unpack when you get home. I promise you, you're going to feel so amazing. And on that note, I'm going to wrap up this episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for next week's episode and also um, a YouTube video I'm going to do about when I pack my carry-on. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon.